In this demonstration, we're going to show the administration functions of a FRU portal. Once I log in and I am administrator, I will still land in the standard dashboard. To administer your FRU site, you'll need to click on the administration menu, which can be accessed here. This option only gets displayed for users with administration privileges. The administration dashboard and navigation tree are displayed. We can see the current storage, our active users, and transactions in terms of files uploaded or downloaded or messages that have been sent. From this view, we can manage users. Users can be added by using the add user function, choosing what type of role they're going to have, deciding options regarding home folders and password requirements, and we have some other features. Users can be deactivated or deleted by clicking on a user. We can click modify and update any of the details or change the role. We can see the files and storage used by user. By clicking on the groups tab, we can see what groups the user belongs to. As I'm an administrator, I'm in most of the administration groups. We can see retention policies either applied directly to a user. Here we can manually reset a password for a user. So let's go back to users. Just finally, right here, you're able to filter based on the different types. So we can filter just administrators, just members. If someone was a manager, we'd filter them. If someone was a guest in terms of logging in to collect a registration or to do a secure upload, it would be listed under a guest user. You can view the groups within the system by selecting the groups tab. We have a number of pre-built groups to administer the site. Users in the administrator group also get access to all the folders in the system. Without being in the administrator group, an admin does not have access to all the folders in the system. Being part of auditors gives you access to the audit module. We then have other administration groups for publishing or Salesforce or retention. Groups can be created to place users in, and then the groups can be used to apply permissions to folders within the file system. Listen, there's a bunch of site options. We can customize the title of the page, welcome messages, support links, browser tabs. We can define that the purge system is running. We can define the type of web transfer options. We can also define if we want to filter files, which we wish to allow certain file types or block certain file types. It's a global setting. There's a, a small piece of customization that can be done here in terms of logos and statements. You can also define what links are available on users' dashboards. Statements can be created that have to be accepted either for a distribution or for an upload. The password tab allows you to define different password policies. You can enforce whatever you like. Messaging tab, this is for messages coming out of the system. We can allow users to have a choice whether they want to force registration or not by external parties. You can set how long messages expire by default. We can allow users to set a longer expiration date. This is a HTML template to create the outbound message. Next interesting part is the audit tab. Audit users can run queries to display any type of transaction or user action or group action. So as an example, if I was to click go, it's going to give me an output of any of these operation types. You can see I've been deleting a lot of files, but just so you understand, right? We, we have multiple applications that can access the file system. They all recorded by a unique ID. So we know which particular application is talking to the file system. We can filter by date ranges. We can also filter by users. So if you want to get a more granular audit, email address, internal, external. We can filter by folders within the file system, right? So if we know the folder path, we can then do an audit based on a folder path. There's also some message delivery filters, like the tracking number or a subject or something in the body of the message. Now, as an example, I can expand this summary into more detail. And we can see the path, the file name, and the file size of the files that were deleted. Now let's say I want to change this and I want to see external uploads and we can go back to beginning of Jan and then click go and see if there was any. All right, you can see external uploads by me pretending to be an external user and placing the file into a registered users Dropbox. Same sort of activity can be exposed for users, whether they were activated, whether they changed their password, whether they were deleted. Again, click and go just shows me some basic authentications. We have some canned reports in the system. Right here, we can basically show all the users, what storage, when they last logged in, et cetera, et cetera. It's all, all of these views can be exported to Excel. So it's a matter of just clicking here and we can export a single page. It comes out as an Excel report. Same for transactions, right? So if we were to run this again, and we can see there is, you know, 49 operations, 20 on this page, so it's three pages. We can export all the results to Excel. 
and then we get a transaction log, which can be used. So retention give administrators and retention users tools to manage the content expiration. So the retention service runs, and there's some options you can have. We can send notifications when so much storage is used. So if we go modify, I could say, right, when we hit 50 gig or 70 gig, we want to get an email sent to retention administrators, also to site administrators. In terms of files that are going to be deleted by retention, we can notify the file owner or just retention administrators. We can send a, a prior warning. Now, if I click on alerts, here we can see the retention notification that an admin or a retention admin would receive. And these reports generate an output that shows the files in the system and where they're located and how many days overdue they are. So we go back to the admin part and back to retention. So we can understand that the notification gets sent or they can view it from alerts. The way it works is you can define definitions, right? To create a definition is simply by clicking add and then choosing whether you want a rule run on inactivity, on a fixed period or over a fixed date or a permanent rule. And again, we can define who the notification will go out to. Point here, as you can see, I've got some fixed dates, fixed periods, inactivity and permanent. These definitions are then applied to different parts of the application. So we can have a, a rule on the site saying any files that are more than one day old and not been touched, generate an alert. We can apply those rules to groups. You can see I've got three different groups. Each group has got a different retention rule. They're all active, but I've got one that's actually got automatic deletion turned on. You can apply those same definitions to individual users. So this Gmail user, any files he creates which have no activity after one day will automatically be deleted. Same for the example user. We can apply those definitions to the file system. So on particular folders, we can apply the same type of rules and again have automatic deletion on or off as required. You can also have file type rules. So if you don't want a certain file type in the system, you can create a rule which is zero day and will simply remove those files whenever they find them. You can also have certain folders excluded. Files that are deleted are stored in the deleted files section. So here is a file that's been deleted. You can see the purge deadline. Files can be restored to where they came from or as an admin or a retention administrator, they can be restored to a user's home location, which is different to the original path. Also, files can be forced deleted from here as well. Last piece is user expiration. It's almost like retention. Again, rules can be created for users, which can then be applied to them as they get created. And then if you want, if a user doesn't use it within a certain time period, they can be deactivated or deleted automatically. So rules can then be applied to the site like before or to a user group, right? Or to a particular user. And based on definition, a user would automatically be deleted or deactivated.